Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Here's another common physics exam style question. This one is on projectile motion. It's a very popular exam question and it comes in all exam boards. This one is not a basic uh, projectile motion because you can get multiple different variations of this like vertical projections, horizontal projections and all that and projecting at the same level. This one is projecting at an angle from a height. Good question. Pause the video and give it a try. When you are sure that you've done what you could with the question and you've got your answer, play the video and compare your answer with mine. A ball is launched from the top of a cliff 20 meters high with a speed of 25 meters per second at an angle of 40 degrees to the horizontal. Assume no air resistance. Calculate the horizontal range of the ball, which is the distance from the launch point to where it lands. So this distance D is the horizontal range. Before we do that, guys, we need to find the vertical and horizontal components of the velocity. So this is 25. The horizontal component is cutting the angle, so it is cos right when you cut it it's cos so this is 25 cos 40 the vertical component is this way that's 25 sin 40 most people write a formula from a to the maximum height b and then height write it from there to the point of landing let's say c and then you get the total time and then use that to get the distance which can be done uh, however it's probably not the quickest way to do it the quickest way would be to write an equation straight from a to c which can be done so i'm going to show you how it is done so i'm going to write from a to c now i need to choose the direction Going to write upwards or downwards let's write it downwards i can do it either way now when i write it downwards what things do i know i know the displacement s is 20 meters this is only vertical motion it's really important 20 meters and it is motion under gravity so the acceleration in downwards is 9.81 and that is positive the initial velocity is 25 sine 40. However, it's negative 25 sine 40. It is negative because the initial velocity is actually upwards here. Yeah? But I'm writing my equation downwards, so it should be negative. This is the bit that you need to be very careful with this. Now, I want to find my time. So let's do this one. S is equal to ut plus half a t squared. Negative 25 sine 40 is negative 16.07. So this is your u. So let's do that. S is 20 u is negative 16.07 t plus half times 9.81 times t squared now i'm not going to show you the quadratic simplification which is pretty easy i would just uh, simplify this one and just double it in the calculator so let's see what time values you get when you solve this, here you get 4.24 seconds or negative 0.96 seconds. Now, obviously, this is time. Time cannot be negative, so we are going to discard this one. So we know the time taken for the motion, for the whole thing, is 4.24 seconds. Now, remember, we used it from A to C. 
so that time is the time it takes to go like that and come down like that that whole motion takes 4.24 seconds now remember to find the horizontal displacement in the horizontal direction it's a constant velocity why so the weight of the object is pulling it in the vertical direction which is perpendicular to the horizontal directions the horizontal velocity remains 25 cos 40 at a constant value throughout the motion because they say their resistance is negligible too so in the horizontal direction all only thing we can do is velocity is equal to displacement over time so displacement is horizontal velocity multiplied by the total time now we know the horizontal velocity is 25 cos 40 multiplied by 4.24 so that gives us 81 meters 81.200 something so 81 meters is the horizontal range of the ball calculate the magnitude and direction of the velocity just before impact now just before impact we have a vertical component we also have a horizontal component and the actual resultant velocity is at an angle something like that now we know the horizontal component is obviously 25 cos 40 because that does not change i need to find the vertical component now the vertical component is the final velocity of the drop so i'm going to write it again from a to c let's write v is equal to u plus a t this is the final velocity u is negative 25 remember i'm writing this downwards 25 sine 40 plus g going downwards is positive 9.81 and i know the total time i worked out 4.24 that gives me 25.52 meters per second so i know the vertical component acting downwards is 25.52 meters per second and i can get the value of 25 cos 40 that's 19.15 so i know the horizontal component at the point of landing is this vertically downward component is 25.52 and i need to find the resultant velocity here so that's quite easy v squared is equal to 19.15 squared plus 25.52 squared and v i can work out using my calculator so i get 31.9 so let's call it 32 meters per second now you can't just give you that because that's the magnitude you need to get the direction too now to get the direction i can get the angle with the vertical or horizontal there's no uh, right or wrong way of doing it so i'm specifying this angle as theta so i'm going to get the angle tan theta is equal to opposite is uh, 19.15 divided by adjacent is 25.52 i can work out theta so it's at an angle of 36.9 degrees to the vertical i mean i've clearly shown the angle here uh, so it's okay or you can even write it's uh, 36.9 degrees with the vertical or even you can if you do it with the horizontal you'll get it's 53 degrees to the horizontal so here's the final answer it's 32 meters per second that's a resultant velocity and at an angle of 36.9 degrees to the vertical for part a the horizontal range we overworked that one to be 81 meters now i know many students usually attempt this by doing it from 
A to B and then from B to C and you will get exactly the same answer. That one is a bit easier but again longer. I'm going to do that method now. This is the second method of finding the horizontal range. So here's the second method. Let's write the equations from A to B. Now I need to find first the vertical height, the height that it achieves. So in the upward direction, U is 25 sine 40. V is zero because it goes to the top at point B and it stops. There's no vertical, no more vertical motion after that point. So V is zero. Upward motion A is negative 9.81. And I need to find, uh, let's find the time first. Because we need the time for that motion too. Let's find the time. V is equal to U plus A T. V is zero. U is 25 sine 40 minus A is 9.81 T. So I can work out T. So the time here is 1.638. So 1.64 seconds. Now this is the time of the motion from A to B. But I now also need to find the height here. So to find S again from A to B to find the height. So V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS in the upward direction. C rho squared is equal to 25 sine 40 squared minus 2 times 9.81 times I took the height to be H. Let's work out the height. So I get the height here is 13.16 meters. So this is the height. Now I need to consider the motion from B to C. B to C motion is downwards. So what is the drop now? We know this height here is 13.16. It was launched from a height of 20. So that's 20 at 13.16. 33.16 meters is the drop. A, now we are writing it to the downward direction, obviously positive 9.81. You need to note this one because here we wrote it upwards and we took the sign as negative because we were writing upwards. Now we are writing downwards. So A is positive. The initial velocity U is zero because at point B in the vertical direction, there's no velocity. It stops at B and starts to go down. So let's find the time for the motion. So S is equal to UT plus half AT squared. So S is 33.16. Now u is zero, so that whole thing goes to zero. Half times 9.81 times t squared. So let's work out the t here. So here I get the time is 2.60008, so 2.6 seconds. Now this is the time it takes to go down from here to here. Now, the horizontal motion takes place from during the whole time, A to B and B to C. So I need to find the total time. So to get the total time, I need to get 1.64 seconds, that is to climb, plus 2.6 seconds, that is for the drop. And that gives me 4.24 seconds. This is the whole thing. Now, if you remember, we got exactly the same time by writing 
the equation directly from A to C, which was a little tricky to do, but it was much shorter. Now in the horizontal direction, displacement is horizontal velocity multiplied by time. Horizontal velocity is 25 cos 40 multiplied by time is total time 4.24. And that exactly gives me 81.2, so 81 meters, just like before. 